Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. And on this week's show, we finally get round to actually comparing all of the Arduino Nanos. I put that in the title of a couple of videos ago and never got round to it. We're also going to be talking about Nordic's new updated system and package for cellular IoT, the NRF9161, and also a very beautiful little tiny addressable LED strip that you can buy that uh, incorporates the smallest addressable LEDs that you can buy. So with that and much more to get through, let's start the show. We're going to start this week's show by looking at a project by Padmalia Raval on the Electromaker website. And this is an Alexa hacking project. Um, now, hacking Alexa is something that has been a, a subject of uh, many, many blog articles for a very long time. Because by nature, they are locked down. It's very difficult to even have your own custom wake words for uh, any home assistant, for example. Uh, this completely gets around that. So before we go any further, let's look at it in action. Hey Jarvis, do you love Iron Man? Yes. So uh, here is the project page where I took that video from. Uh, there will be a link to it in the description of this video as always. Um, and as you saw, um, this essentially uh, adds uh, a little bit of hardware to an Alexa. And so if I scroll down to the uh, assembled image of it, you'll see you have a 3D printed base which uh, houses all the custom electronics and a tiny little speaker that sits on top of the Alexa. Um, and the way it works is surprisingly simple, but it is a, a surprising amount of complexity to get there. Essentially, you need something that will pick up your own custom wake word, and then when it hears it, it will speak very quietly um, hey Alexa through the mini speaker to the Alexa, which doesn't change the functionality of it at all. It means if someone else was to say, hey Alexa, the Alexa would still hear it. But um, if you say, hey Jarvis, as he does in this case, or any wake word you want, um, it will also wake it up. Also, apologies to all of you that have an Alexa that got triggered many, many times if you're listening to this through the speakers. Alexa, <laughs> stop it, Ian. So this CAD model covers quite nicely what is in there, and of course there's an image I'll move down to in a moment as well. An Arduino Nano, which is the brains of the operation, it is talking to one of these amazing Gravity DF Robot offline language learning boards, which is a very small module that can learn a small number of wake words. And then it is attached to a DF Mini, um, which uh, I, th I think a lot of people have had a lot of experience with, because they're an incredibly easy way to play audio. Um, you can plug a micro SD card into it and trigger it using any MCU, Arduino Nano, it doesn't have to have much power, just enough to say, hey, play now, and it will play out of whatever speaker setup that you have. And if I scroll down, we can see that uh, very speaker setup. It is a tiny little speaker on top of the Alexa, and it only needs to be tiny because it only needs to pick up, uh, it only needs to make a very small sound right next to the Alexa. Because remember, one of the big things about home assistants is they are designed to pick out a voice across a crowded room. They are designed specifically to hear Hey Alexa from almost any sorry, <laughs> almost any position in a room. So a tiny speaker right next to it is an almost 100% perfect way of doing it. And here are the innards. So um, if you are interested in this project, uh, you can find all of the code and all of the things you need to actually build it. He even gives you some guiding on uh, how to slice it as well. Um, obviously, if you have one of the newer Alexas, which are more like a globe rather than this shape, I actually have this exact model, which is great for me because uh, I, my Alexa has been sitting, not being used for a very long time. This makes me want to get it out again. Like I, I'm not sold on the voice assistant thing, but just something as simple as this makes me want to kind of get down to it. But yeah, if you wanted uh, to uh, emulate this, you're Yourself. Um, all of the code and everything else you need is in this project, which, as I've already mentioned, is linked in the description. Um, just a very quick plug for the Electromaker store. This is how we fund the show. At electromaker.io slash shop, there is a bunch of stuff, including the same gravity offline language learning sensor from DF Robot. In fact, every part of the project that you just saw, including the um, uh, the spool, the um, FDM, the plastic for your 3D printer, is available from the Electromaker store. So uh, do take a moment to check that out. It is the best way that you can support us. Now, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that the video before Christmas uh, had every Arduino Nano compared in its title, and yet that section did not appear in the show. Um, that show was very hard to get recorded. There was so much to talk about with Zephyr and with Eli's project and how the NXP parts and the Nordic parts all came together that essentially I just completely forgot to put it into the show. That's on me. Um, but it's a fantastic video and article by Robin, and I want to remedy that right now. Um, so the video is, is already live, um, and so is the article. There'll be a link to that in the description of this, um, in this video. And I would highly recommend going and watching it. Robin knows what he's talking about. He gives a very snappy and good breakdown of what each Nano is good for, what you might want to use it for. Um, and there's also a, a fantastic article, which... Uh 
one of the things I quite like about this article is that it's almost like a bit of an Arduino Nano reference in and of itself, because as well as all of the great information about it, there's a picture of each Arduino and the pinout right there. So that one article, if you have it in your bookmarks, you can find the pinout of any of the Arduinos that have come out so far, and who knows, maybe we'll update it to include the new Silicon Labs and Arduino Matterboard that will be coming out at some point in the next couple of months. I think it was March it was coming out. Anyway, let's start with the ESP32 Nano. A lot of people were excited when this was announced for obvious reasons, because as Andreas Spies says, the ESP32 is the maker's darling. And there are a lot of ESP32 boards out there, and a lot of them already have Arduino support. But this is putting the ESP32 directly into the Nano ecosphere, ecosystem, whatever you want to call it, um, with the exact same form factor as the Arduino Nano. It will work with anything else that works with the Arduino Nano. And it has a USB Type-C connector, which pleases me a lot, and I know it pleases Robin a lot. I'm sure he mentions that in the video. In fact, I know he does, because whenever he has a chance to talk about how much he loves USB-C and how much he hates USB uh, micro USB, he does. Anyhow, uh, the product page for the Arduino Nano ESP32 in the Electromaker shop um, has the full product description from Arduino on there, so you can find out anything else you would like to know about it. Um, Robin goes through his reasons why it might be good or not good to use. My personal ones are, well, the ESP32 is highly well supported across the board everywhere you can use it with the arduino ide you can use it with much more complicated things or you can just use straight expressive tools the expressive idf um, and uh, it does have a dac on it so if you wanted to try and turn it into a synthesizer you could try but i've never actually used the onboard dac on an esp32 now that i come to think of it now as robin mentions in the video and the article the esp32 variant is amazing for everything except security uh, however the arduino nano 33 iot has a secure element in it because the chip on it is the sam d51 chip i believe it's the one I know the least about, hand on heart. Um, and again, that's why I'm glad Robin is doing the video. He's the one who has the engineering degree and can look into this and not say something stupid. I can get away with saying stupid things from time to time. Um, I do, however, know that that chip, once again, has a DAC. I'm sorry, it's the first thing I think about with every microcontroller. Can I make a synthesizer out of it? But the SAMD21 chip on it is a very powerful and highly supported chip. If I remember correctly, um, you can use Circuit Python on it as well as um, uh, Arduino's own code. It's, uh, of course, compatible with the Arduino IoT Cloud. And I think that's nice about this is it has a U-Blox um, chip on it for uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's a low power chip set called the Nina W10 um, and it also has a crypto chip on it. So if you need to do something with security in, um, I know absolutely nothing about that but if you do, this is the one for you. Now, out of the three we have left to talk about, I mean, it's technically four, but we'll get to that in a moment, um, it's very difficult for me to choose between the next two, because we have the Arduino Nano 33B LE Sense, uh, which we're going to talk about now, and the Arduino Nano uh, RP2040 Connect. But the, the Nano BLE Sense, to me, is one of my favourite combinations of things. It has a bunch of sensors on board. It has a PDA microphone on board. It has um, a uh, inertial measurement unit on board as well. It has a couple of other sensors on it, um, it but it also has the NRF52840 system on chip on it, which is one of Nordic's sort of lower powered, but still top of the tree, can still do a hell of a lot of stuff chips. Um, and it, it comes with Bluetooth low energy built into it, of course, but it also comes with a fantastic amount of support in the Arduino IDE. So if you want to get started with Bluetooth, um, a couple of those boards um, is pretty much everything you need. Uh, you can learn how to get them talking to each other. You can learn how to do it in mesh mode. Uh, pretty much everything is supported in Arduino. Um, and I am fairly sure that it also exists in MicroPython, but I have not actually gone down that road myself, so don't quote me on it. Now, moving on to the Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect. When this came out, I got it immediately. Um, the Raspberry Pi Pico had just been released, and I bought a handful of those, um, but this was the first uh, widely supported board that came out that put the RP2040 chip with a Wi-Fi chip as well. Um, and it was Arduino, so it was immediately supported in the Arduino IDE, and Liz from Blizz City DIY seemingly overnight ported the board to CircuitPython, so right off the bat, I had CircuitPython support as well. I used it to make a very janky uh, motion controller for Trackmania, that's a different different story for a different day. Um, and one of the things I like about it is that, again, CircuitPython support, it's actually somewhat cheaper than the Nano 33B LE Sense as well. Um, so if you if you don't need that Bluetooth low energy um, uh, incorporation, but you want sensors on board your Nano, for me, this is the best bang for your buck. But like I say, I would have great difficulty choosing between the two. So I've already talked about this longer than I want to. Robin's video is up there. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. Um, I'm not going to talk about the original Arduino Nano because the Arduino Nano every replaces it. It's a 5 volt tolerant board with a better Atmel chip on it, um, and it is cheaper than the original Arduino Nano. 
So if you want that, uh, if you need a drop in replacement, this is the one that you're going to want, um, which is interesting because the Arduino Nano Every is the only backwards compatible uh, Nano that they uh, that they have now, whereas the Arduino Uno R4 is backwards compatible thanks to the new Renesas chip on it. It is a 32-bit, much more powerful controller, but it will work with legacy Arduino stuff because it is again five volt tolerant. The 33 in the name of every single one of these other boards means um, it is 3.3 volts tolerant. So yeah, don't don't stick it in projects and mess that up. Um, but this article is fantastic. Robin's done an amazing job. I shouldn't have waffled on so much about it, but I got excited and wanted to talk about Arduino Nanos. Uh, you will find a link to it in the description of this video. On our last show, we started a contest to give away the Fire Beetle 2 ESP32-based development board. Now, um, just as a quick recap, the uh, Fire Beetle 2 is an ESP32-based dev board, and they are 10 a penny. There are many of them. But there are a number of reasons why this one is kind of special. Um, I urge you to go and look at the uh, article, which is linked in the description and the video. Um, uh, the little uh, GDI, the, uh, the display adapter on it, is kind of interesting. There's another Fire Beetle as well. It has even more things attached to it, but that's another story for another day. We started a contest to give one away, and it is now time to announce the winner of the that contest. And our winner is Ralph Yamamoto, who's a name I recognize. You've been in our comments for a very long time, Ralph. Congratulations for winning. Thank you for sticking around since pretty much the beginning of this show. He says, the ESP32 is one of my favorite processes. I would use the Fire Beetle 2 to make a gas sensor with a local GDI display. I was surprised to discover that there's also a version of the Fire Beetle 2 that has a DVP camera interface in addition to the display port, which is what I was just talking about. I probably had your comments in my mind. That would be a great kit to make a handheld AI camera, which is a wonderful idea. However, However, um, if you do get your um, gas detector uh, up and running with your display, please do post it on the Electromega website. That's exactly the kind of thing I would love to talk about on the show. And I'm always interested to see what happens to the prizes that we give away. Um, yeah, there's so many wonderful things pass through our hands that I don't really have time to play with. Um, and I can vicariously uh, kind of watch other people do things with them. That said, um, I do have some hands-on stuff coming very soon, which I'm very hands-off. No, hands-on stuff coming very soon, which I'm very happy about. Anyway, with that said, let's get on with the rest of the the show. This is the microdose and sensory bridge from Lixi Labs. Um, it's a very, very lovely and very, very small set of addressable LEDs that plug into a controller that um, is basically a music visualizer. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to talk about the sensory bridge much right now because it is sold out. It was a limited run, and I don't know if it's going to be coming back. But those LEDs that you're seeing are W. They work the same as WS2812Bs or NeoPixels, as they're called, um, but on a very, very small scale, and they're very lovely. Now, this is the shop page for the microdose, and this is the thing that I'm going to link in the description of this video. Um, I should point out that they haven't asked us to talk about this. We're not sponsored by them or anything. I just thought it was lovely. Um, now, the sensory bridge, as I may have already mentioned, is unfortunately sold out. You cannot get it. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it right now. Um, it does look interesting, and if it comes back into stock, maybe we will. But the microdose themselves um, can work with any microcontroller. They can work with Arduino. In fact, on the page here, the Arduino code they have specifically shows you how to use the two data lines that the microdose has in order to pump data into them quicker. You can control them like traditional WS12B, uh, WS2812B uh, addressables uh, with one um, a GPIO pin. Um, but if you really want to get the data into them at speed, uh, you can use the two data pins here and they have example code for it. As you can see here, there's also CircuitPython um, examples here, but that's only going to be for a single GPIO pin. They don't have the parallel data thing working with CircuitPython yet. Um, and these things are available for €45.97, or about $50 in American, um, from electrons.com. And again, I'll link that in the description of this video. And if I can get on my soap docs, soap docs, soap box for just a moment, you could absolutely get a very cheap addressable LED um, from the internet for very cheap sent direct from China, and it will work perfectly in your project. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But to make things like this costs money, and it will cost you money to buy them too. But supporting the people who are trying to make beautiful little products like this means more beautiful little products like this can exist. So yeah, soapbox moment over. But I think $50 for this is actually very worth it for something truly lovely. And yes, I, I, have, I have ordered one. <laughs> Nordic Semiconductor has announced the follow-up to their NRF9160 system and package for cellular IoT, and it is called the NRF9161, unsurprisingly. Now, this is the development kit for the 9160. Um, I used to have also a Thingy91, which has the same system and package in it, which is just here. Um, uh, but of course, I had to give that away, as I do give almost things away. Um, but yeah, this is the development kit, and the development kit for the new one will look very, very similar. In fact, if you look at the image right here, they are very, very similar indeed. Um, now, the first thing you might wonder is, what are the differences between the original system and package and the new one. And that's not an easy thing to answer unless you were to have, say, for example, a, a chart which shows them all side by side. 
So isn't it wonderful that Martin Lassund, who I think is the technical marketing director at Nordic, um, I, I may have your job title wrong, Martin, if you see this, I apologize, has made a little chart that shows you the differences between the NRF 9160 and the NRF 9161 and the NRF 9131, something I was not familiar with until I saw this chart. Now, if you would like to know all the details, I would suggest just going here and reading them yourself. There are a few key details, like a, a wider range of certified bands um, and decked NR+, which is something I know absolutely nothing about. There is something in this chart, however, which I think is very, very exciting. And since this was posted by Martin on the DevZone and it is public, you don't have to sign in to, to say it or anything, I think I'm okay in saying this. There's going to be a new Thingy91 called the Thingy91 X, which has the NRF 9161 system and package in it. And like I say, I, I hope I'm not uh, breaking any rules by saying this it was posted here and when i saw it i got super excited because i as much as i really love this development board for the 9161 um then the 9160 sorry the thingy 91 was such a special thing it had all the sensors built in it had rfid built in um, and then you could just plug a sim card into it and have this amazing box with a battery in it and yeah we hosted a competition on it uh, last year or whatever i've talked about the thingy 91 ad nauseum at this point and i will talk about it more Anyway, all of my over-enthusiasm aside, I'm slightly in the way here, aren't I? Um, I will link this uh, page from the DevZone uh, in the description of the video. Um, if it doesn't say this anymore when you see this, apologies, I may have said something I shouldn't. I don't think that's a problem, though. If you are a Zephyr user, and um, recently, as you'll know if you saw two shows ago, I have become somewhat of a convert to Zephyr, um, you can get the 9161DK up and running on Zephyr straight away. Indeed, Nordic's SDK is Zephyr. It's a basically... They, it's basically their flavor of Zephyr is the best way I could put it. Following Nordic's Dev Academy getting started with any of the uh, NRF Connect SDK, they may as well have just called it Getting Started with Zephyr. If you follow a Getting Started with Zephyr course that uses a Nordic board or follow the uh, NRF Connect Getting Started guide, they're very, very similar indeed. However, I will say that some of the tools that um, Nordic have for VS Code are very, very lovely. I've just started playing with those. Um, anyway, um, the NRF 9161 DK is not available at this point, I do not think. However, it should be available very soon, um, and when it is, we'll be talking about it again. Now, last year at a Raspberry Pi event in Cambridge, uh, someone asked Evan Upton, will there be a Pi 5 compute module? Now, this was not reported um, widely. It, someone talked about it on Mastodon. I think I noted it down at the time, and we didn't have time to talk about it in this week's show. We've been talking a huge amount about the Pi 5 release anyway. Um, but that's something that he sort of hinted at at that time, apparently, that it might be coming. Um, and now that has been absolutely confirmed, uh, as you're probably already aware of if you're a fan of Jeff Geeling. Now, I'm going to link this Tom's Hardware article in the description of the video, just because this is where I first saw it, but if you are a fan of Jeff Geeling as well, it is on his YouTube channel. And essentially, this is Jeff interviewing Evan Upton once again, uh, this time at CES 2024. So very recently, this happens in January every year, the big consumer trade show. Um, and Evan gives a very Evan answer to this, which he asks, is the compute module five coming? And he says, yes, but he doesn't give any kind of time to it, alludes to the fact that if you are uh, have a certain kind of relationship with Raspberry Pi, they can give you tech specs that you can start designing around, but they keep everything very close to their chest. That's just what Raspberry Pi do. Um, I did interview Evan myself a while ago for Electromaker. There's a link to that um, in, in our channel. I'll, I'll link it in the description of this video. Um, and he, the way he is... Uh, is the way he is. He's very genuine. He's very involved with Raspberry Pi. He's very passionate about it. Um, to the extent that when I wanted to talk to him about the Pi Pico and a couple of other things... Um, he was not comfortable doing the interview in his car, where he was at the time. He wanted to make a good job of it. So he offered to take the time out of his day to drive to his house and reschedule the meeting with me so that he'd have better audio and was able to think better about his answers. Like, he really does care for a CEO. Um, now, this video goes over a bunch of other things as well. Um, you can read the Tom's Hardware article for that too. I'm not going to go into any more uh, details. Uh, I, I do love the fact that they have a Compute Module 5 wish list. I'm not going to go into any more details right now because once again, um, Jeff Geeling is is kind of the Raspberry Pi guy on YouTube, and he's talking to literally the Raspberry Pi guy. Um, their words are going to be far better than any of mine. So yes, you can find a link to that in the description of this video. That has been our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I hope the show came together um, like a normal Electromaker show. Um, I know it's sometimes hard to tell when it's been edited together and put up, but um, recording this week's show was a little bit weird because I've had sick children and I've been sick myself, kind of fitting things together and finding the time to get all the relevant screen grabs and do the research and talk to the camera has been a little bit rushed. And I hope that didn't come across too much in the episode. As always, if you would like to support us directly, the best way you can do that is by heading to electromaker.io slash shop where you can buy anything for your project uh, or you can buy the present for someone's first hobby maker kit or 10,000 of something if your job requires it. 
And uh, with the church bells ringing just outside the window, I don't know if you guys can hear that, it is time for me to say goodbye. I will see you next week. Have a safe, fun and creative one.